Okay, shall we shall we attempt like an intro or something? Yes, yes, we shall. Do 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 do. do. Oh, where's my flag gone? <laughs> Fun with flags. It's going to be a real thing. <laughs> and I have, I have a whole bunch of different flags. Ooh. I'm going to have fun with this all episode. God. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. Oh, great. Now I've got a call 999. I've witnessed it. I well, know you're going to have to do the show by yourself. I can leave my little flag. <laughs> last, last dying effort, waving the pride flag. Hello, I'm Sister Alaska Lot. And I'm Sister Babushka. And this is Utter Nonsense. Yay! The show. <laughs> We pour a cup of boiling hot tea. And we utter whatever nonsense pops into our heads. <laughs> There's plenty of it. So much. And this, as you can maybe tell by now, is a laid back chat between friends. And we release a brand new episode on the first day of the month, every single month. So keep an eye on us and subscribe to get updates. It was weird that that was all done in one take. <laughs> Maybe we've lost our nonsense. <laughs> Your sister Joan when you need her. <laughs> she's here, she's here, she's made it. <laughs> sister Joan, bring back the nonsense. <laughs> ah, Sister Joan. <laughs> ah, Sister Joan. She gave me a good numb flap. I'll, I'll like slap her face with my flag. Oh, well, that's her now. <laughs> I don't like a light. Peace and quiet at last. <laughs> Finally, she never shuts up, I tell you that. It drives me mad living with Sister Joan. I've heard she'd be quite the handful. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sister Babushka, what do you want to talk about today? Well, today, Sister Alaska, I'd like to talk about the fall of capitalism. <laughs> it's a very heavy topic, Sister. <laughs> well, I think that's what the people want. <laughs> that's what all the fans have been demanding. <laughs> and, and we live to serve. <laughs> Every episode, they're like, Babushka, why do you not talk about the fall of capitalism? And I'm like, you know what, we will. And so we're going to do that today. I would have thought uh, Babushka would have a little bit more to say on the fall of communism. It was a great time. I'm <laughs> sad it ended. <laughs> My beat so, so well. <clears throat> so, Sister Babushka, what would you like to talk about today? Okay, Sister Alaska, I thought it would be really nice, since it is coming up for Pride season, for us to chat about what our first Pride was like. Woohoo! Oh, that's a very exciting topic. And of course, when this episode goes out, it will be Pride season. Come on, prepared! <laughs> Can you tell? Can you tell I like Pride season? <laughs> no, you did it so well. How could you keep that from me? Hello? Oh, hello! Did I thought die? You just, <laughs> thought you decided, fuck this, I hate Pride. I'm logging off. <laughs> well, I really just died for a little bit. And then you were reborn! Hallelujah! Thank the Sister Joan. She gave me CPR. <laughs> Sister Joan, we will be forever in your debt. I am very excited to, to talk about a Pride related topic um, and to talk about our first Pride as sisters. Just broke my little flag. <laughs> it's fine. You love Pride so <laughs> I just pulled the top off. It's fine. I put it back on. 
Yes, I am very excited to talk about Pride and in particular reminiscing about the first Pride that we attended as sisters because it was a particularly lovely one and probably to this day is still one of my favourites, if not the favourites. I think this is part of these conversations that we've warned people about before where we have both been there together and so we can keep going, oh yeah, we did this together. Um, but share our different perspectives on how it went um, as both our first outing as sisters um, to Pride. So I think some of the things that we are going to talk about then are not just what the Pride was, but, you know, our experience of it, given that we were so new to the order at the time, um, you know, how we felt, um, how it was, you know, interacting with the community, which was still very, very new to us, and um, just... I don't know, general impressions, excitements, all the things. <laughs> all the things. <laughs> and I'm sure we've got plenty of photos that we can insert into various bits as well, so people can, can see our lovely little baby nun faces. <laughs> I mean, if it's a pride, there's going to be photos of us somewhere, isn't there? <laughs> it's pretty much guaranteed as a sister, if, if you go outside to pride, there will be photos taken. You stand out a fair bit, even at a Pride March, so <laughs> there will be photos. I didn't just wake up looking like this. It takes effort. I want at least one photo. <laughs> so then, Sister Alaska, would you like to introduce us to what our first Pride as sisters was? Yeah, our first Pride as sisters happened very early on in our sister journey, didn't it? Um, in fact, we were still postulants at the time. Oh, yes, back in the pre-pandemic days as well. Oof. I'm trying to remember what manifests we did before that, because it would have been one of our very earliest ones. It wasn't the very first one, but it wasn't far off it. Yeah, we'd had the, the sort of coffee morning was our very first one. Um, and then I think we'd had, was it maybe one more? I've just checked. Yes. So um, we'd had a couple of different manifests. You, as far as I'm aware, had two manifests before this Pride. So this was your third manifest. Um, for me, it was my fourth because I had done an extra one. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we'd only had like two or three manifests before this Pride happened. So we were still very, very fresh faced um, as, as fresh faces you can be with white paint on. <laughs> Very new. I had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> like, like babes lost in the woods. <laughs> lost in amongst the pride flags. <laughs> <laughs> Winter everywhere, but nobody else to see. Nice <laughs> news, I glittered my lips for the first time today. Probably can't tell on camera. Oh, oh, they do look shiny. Oh, the glitters. And it does hurt the environment. How nice it's biodegradable glitter. Uh, oh, does that hurt the environment too? I've just destroyed half the earth with my lips. <laughs> if Thanos can do it with a snap, you can do it with your lips. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure about biodegradable, but I've heard mixed things from various people. Some people saying it's fine and other people saying, well, it's still partly plastic, so there will still be some microplastic. <laughs> well, that's me back off the glitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, we were supposed to be talking about stuff. What were we talking about? Gay things. Gay things. So yeah, it, it was fairly early on um, going out to this Pride. Um, I think I, I definitely felt apprehensive um, going, considering I'd had very few sort of notches under my belt, as it were. Um, but I think that was just partly due to how many opportunities we had to manifest before Pride season came along. Um, but it was nice having somebody else that was also in the same position as me coming along. Yes, in fact, there was three postulants that day. So there was three of us who were all very new because we'd all joined, you know, not that far apart from each other. Um, 
And so I think we were probably all really nervous. And we had uh, one black male with us to to try and <laughs> negotiate us through. <laughs> One black veil wrangling, three weird postulants. Oh, what could go wrong? It's like having three excitable, bright-eyed children <laughs> who've been let loose with glitter. <laughs> One of the many times I would spill glitter in that black veil house. It went everywhere. <laughs> it was lid's fault. It wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> Not only was it my first pride as a sister, but it was my first pride ever. So I genuinely had no idea what to expect. It was not my first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I, I'd had some previous experience going to prides um, as a as a civilian, shall we say? Um, so yeah, I, I had rough ideas of what at least what pride in Edinburgh would look like. Um, and what it looks like in Glasgow, but I'm aware that those are bigger cities, so, you know, a lot more happens, so I imagined it would be something maybe similar to that, but, yeah, not knowing how to interpret that while going as a sister, uh, that was a definitely new experience. And what's really interesting is that this one that we went to, um, our, our first one as sisters, was actually a smaller pride, so it wasn't one of the big ones in one of the main cities. Um, it was in East Lothian in Scotland. And um, it, it was a different format. So you didn't have, like there was no march involved in this one. Um, it was basically like a garden party in glorious sunshine. Like It was really, really lovely. And I have since learned that smaller prides often do have this very different feel to them, a real community vibe. There's just something so much more intimate about them at a smaller pride you get that interaction you really feel like you're more involved in the community so as a sister they're actually really lovely to go to i think part of that is obviously because you've got less people there so you you obviously see a lot more people close up and you're not pushing through thousands of people so yeah i did i did feel that sort of closeness as well when we were there and just the setting of it obviously being a garden party in the area that we were at that obviously also gives it a more community feel almost like a gala day um, that you sometimes see around the country happening as well yeah it was basically held at um i don't know how to describe it it was held at something that's like a, a big old house um which would have had you know large gardens round about and the event was taking place in the gardens and there was like several sections so they could split it up into different types of activities and so it gave it a very different feel to walking you know through the streets at a pride parade in your main city which is also an amazing experience but a very different experience and i think the, the smaller pride atmosphere was probably a nice introduction to prides as a sister yeah i, th I think there would have been a complete different feel um, and obviously a lot more nerves as well if we'd went and been thrown in at the deep end of like Edinburgh, Glasgow Pride, where you've got thousands of people watching you. I mean, well, this was a nice couple hundred and it was very, you know, <laughs> nice, <laughs> chill. <laughs> the weather that day was particularly good. Like it was spectacular sunshine. It was warm. Scotland's not always that warm. <laughs> So, you know, this was a particularly good day. People are lacing around on the grass and having picnics and it was, you couldn't have asked for anything better, really. Best pride. Best pride. <laughs> One of the memories from that day that sticks in my mind the most is the reception we got when we first arrived because I had never experienced that as a sister. Oh, yes. Um, are, are you remembering the same person who like cheered as soon as we walked through the archway to the estate? Yeah. <laughs> Literally cheering and clapping. Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> I mean, if you're going to make an entrance, you've got to have somebody like that standing ready for you. And it was, yeah, such an entrance. <laughs> I think everyone else heads at that point in the garden around, sort of turned around to see what was going on. Honestly, if I could track them down, I would take them with me to every pride because I need that entrance every time. 
<laughs> Anytime you go anywhere, just have them stationed up ahead of you. Just walk in. Like, Woo! <laughs> I think it really set the tone for the kind of reception that we were going to get throughout that event. It was really nice to start that off and then going round, you know, when we wandered the stalls that were set up around the garden and when we just walked around the garden having a look at what was available, just like the amount of smiles or, you know, people saying hello and wanting a quick chat or just even to get a wee quick picture. Um, it was, yeah, it was a really lovely tone to be set that continued throughout the day of just everyone being really welcome and inviting and not just with us but with each other as well because it was a really friendly atmosphere obviously the most fabulous people got the best reception <laughs> so I remember we went around to stalls and we sort of chatted to the different organizations that were there and we got to learn a bit more about what they were doing for the community and some of them knew who we were and some of them were not quite sure about the sisters. So it was a real opportunity for us to learn as postulants at the time. Yeah, I remember that was one of the first things we did, actually. We arrived, we just kind of generally got the feel of our surroundings. And then we instantly went over to the stalls and started talking to different people and kind of doing that community networking stuff. I hadn't memorised the, the pattern, the explanation of who we are and what we do. And so getting to hear that, you know, several times over as we talked to different groups of people was really, really helpful and started to kind of embed it into me as well. Also, yay, we got some free merch. So many badges. <laughs> one of our favourite things, and one of my favourite things anyway, at uh, Prides is getting free free badges um, which, you know, there's, there's a bit of a collection happening now. <laughs> that was probably the first event that I'd been to where someone offered us badges. And I was like, oh, I've got all this space and no badges yet. Yes, please. <laughs> and, you know, they're, they're brilliant. They, you know, one's about different pronouns or with different types of pride flags um, or, you know, for different good causes. And every badge, I think, has a meaning behind it and so you end up with this this tapestry of badges which is basically your journey as a sister and things that were important to you along the way we could do a whole episode on badges collected <laughs> in them, actually I could probably do a tour of the badges <laughs> have a tour of our yes, <laughs> <laughs> and there's still room for more badges i mean should anyone feel that they they need to donate a badge i mean <laughs> you could always get in touch <laughs> Sorry, I was just contemplating my badges. I wasn't, I wasn't just randomly staring at my chest. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. So yeah, going around the stalls was was a really great experience, and I think there were even a few stall members there who were members of the order, but um, not from our house. I think there was one stall person who'd also been um, from the US who'd obviously seen the sisters across the pond um, and was pleasantly surprised to also find us here um, in Scotland. That's right yeah <laughs> it's really nice when you come across other people who've got connections with the sisters as well. Very true. And finding out about the different services that are being offered to the community different things that are available because then you know we we can talk to other people about them as well and help spread that awareness and knowledge. I, th I think I walked away with the same amount of badges as I did like leaflets from all the stalls. That's right. I, I ended up with a bag full of leaflets. <laughs> After that, I think we kind of went through to the main garden and started looking around at um, some of the stuff was there because they had a stage with performers of, of different types. Um, they had was it Pink Soul Tire, I think, had their display where they had all the dates of all the different prides and you could find out about all the other things that were happening, which was really good. Um, and for some reason, we took a particular liking to a little donut van, which had like a, <laughs> a fake like donut outside it that we all pretended to bite and thought that was a hilarious photo. <laughs> Who doesn't love donuts? <laughs> oh, and don't forget, we also had that really lovely um, sort of throne seat garden piece thing that they had, and we all had to get a photo on that. Oh, yes. 
as we were exploring the garden, the best find was that throne. And of course, as sisters, even as newbies, couldn't pass up the photo opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> and what's even better is that we found a photographer who wanted, like, they, they saw us at the throne and instantly went, can I take a picture of her? We're like, absolutely. <laughs> Let us just get our poses on. <laughs> I think we looked absolutely gorge. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. We must have spent, like, half an hour at least there. <laughs> I mean, it's not worth it unless you've got a little bit of vanity going on, spending some time there, eh? We all looked fabulous. The throne was fabulous. Okay. Did I die again? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone would think you didn't want to be here today. <laughs> I'll just sit here with my wee pride flag. And show pictures. <laughs> show and tell. <laughs> Don't be time with Alaska because Babushka fucked off. It's going to happen one of these days, isn't it? <laughs> Back to my precious Chernobyl. I remember we sat for a while um, watching the there were different performances happening on that stage. So I think at some point there was a Bon John. Bon Jovi sort of singer. I remember the Bon Jovi act. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> we were all singing along at the top of our voices. <laughs> Whether or not anyone there was very good, there was definitely a lot of passion. I think everyone was just having fun, having this great big sing-along, really, weren't they? <laughs> we're all sitting there on the grass at that point, in the sunshine, um, having a picnic and singing along to some Bon Jovi. What more could you want from a pride? <laughs> But it wasn't all fun and games, Alaska. No. While we were there, sitting in the grass, enjoying ourselves in the sun, dancing, laughing, having fun, <laughs> frolicking, I was assaulted. A small child ran up to me and rubbed their face against mine, smearing my makeup. Oh, it's one of the worst crimes against a sister. Never smear the makeup. Took me three and a half hours to do this. <laughs> Maybe it was just a critique on how my skills were at the time, which was still, still new, still fair enough. <sighs> to be fair, the, the wee girl, I think, was just so excited and thought you were the most amazing thing ever. <laughs> well, I was the favourite out of the four of us there. You were absolutely the favourite. <laughs> She just wanted all your glitter. She wanted to share in your magnificence. And I do remember the game of, are you a boy or are you a girl? For some reason, she insisted in going around each of us and asking and then trying to guess. Even though all of us said, well, we're nuns, darling. We're nuns. Non-binary. <laughs> Non-binary. <laughs> it, it was lovely that we had a fan, um, even as young as that child was. But yes. I, I could have, I would have happily applied makeup to her face if she had asked without smearing my own. Even children, you know, should be learning about asking for consent for things before you accost someone <laughs> and steal their face glitter. <laughs> I mean, I know my smeared face looked probably as good as my face was before the smearing, but still, that's not the point. It was nice to have our first fan, though. I mean, admit it, there was a little bit of you that was like, I've got a fan. <laughs> nice to be appreciated, yes. I, I, I only remember the story in jest, the horror I felt that my makeup was ruined. How <laughs> very dare she. Spent hours working on this, please, not the face, anywhere but the face. And that was not the last time we would see her either. She does appear in later stories too. <laughs> fan that follows me through the prime. Not creepy at all. <laughs> no, not creepy that this child is stalking me at all. I also remember that uh, as after we'd been accosted and after we'd sat and enjoyed some of the entertainment, we ended up being invited into the VIP room in the house itself. That was very exciting. They realised our potential. That's the story I'm sticking with. 
<laughs> Sister Babushka, you're the biggest star of us all. <laughs> I'm the biggest something, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to censor you, darling, are we? <laughs> How very dare you censor me. Is that nonsense enough? <laughs> right, clearly you're not my pastor. <laughs> I think it was quite a young pride compared to some of them that we've been to. I would have to double check. I, th I think it was the first time they were doing an actual, um, you know, public pride festival, essentially. Um, and sadly, the, the year after that was 2020. And of course, no prides happened in person in 2020. So they were very quiet over last year. And I know that in that time, they've also suffered some real losses as well. So I think um, the, the people who are left are really dedicated to bringing it back and making it something special and keeping the original vision going. And I, I really do wish them all the best because honestly, I would love to go along and support them again. You can buck and bet we'll be back there supporting them as soon as the events are <laughs> I love how on my phone your face is now frozen into the most disapproving thing ever. <laughs> how do you know it's frozen? <laughs> I mean, you're talking to me and your lips are. Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> so disapproving. God, Alaska. <laughs> Right, hold on. I'm going to kill my internet connection on my phone and then I should just drop out and then I'll come back. Aha. I've been left all on my own. Sister Babushka has left. Mid-meeting. Shocking behaviour. Shocking. But now we can dish all the dirt without her. Oh no, she's back. Oh no. <laughs> <What are you laughs> <doing? laughs> It was Sister Joan, I bet you. Oh no, well now that you're here, we can't talk about any of the stuff we were going to talk about. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love technical issues. Yay. <laughs> so I suppose we should wrap up this show then. Oh, if we must. I was having such fun. I'm glad you're the brains behind this operation. I think we're in trouble if I'm the brains behind it. Now, you say that, but you know it's true. Come on. I would like to think it's a joint effort in stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will allow that then. Between the two of us, we get there. Cool. <sighs> So Alaska, I think that's been a lovely conversation that we fuck off. <laughs> that didn't do anything. It's just that Cheshire grin and slight giggle. <laughs> so Sister Alaska, I think we've had a lovely conversation about what our first pride uh, manifesting as sisters was and reflecting on how wholesome that was being on such a close-knit event where we got to really engage with the community and also dip our toes into the water of what our sister activism was going to be about. Lovely conversation. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Utter shambles of chat. No, you're right. I did. I, it, it's a topic that I really love. Um, because it was such an enjoyable event and it's really nice just occasionally you know reminiscing about what a nice day we had I've, I've really enjoyed this one and I, I always enjoy um, any opportunity to get my rainbows out it's not as dirty as you thought it was no 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 <laughs> I'm left speechless that you judge my character so <laughs> I know sister Joan is judging you from the sidelines too She just does it right to my face. She doesn't judge from the sidelines. <laughs> oh, 
lot of the prides that are happening this year will again be online just due to keeping everyone safe and making sure that everyone in the community has a way to participate without putting themselves at risk so i think it's really good to engage with these small pride events as well as the bigger ones online as well as in person celebrate good times come on that was no. my only contribution such valued input i know so profound every time i open my mouth <laughs> so what will we be talking about next time sister alaska so next time we wanted to chat a little bit about um, a bit of a hot topic actually in the community at the moment um, around the use of uh, chosen names and pronouns. This is something that really impacts on the trans and non-binary community and of course as we know um, trans people are, are having to fight really hard for their rights at the moment and this is just one small aspect of of that larger topic um, but I feel it's quite an important one to talk about you know why it's important and how it impacts on people's lives. Yeah it, it definitely feels like it's something that a lot of people online uh, at the moment are discussing so it will be really interesting to chat around that um, and talk about how we can be better allies um, to friends, family and people in the wider community overall as well. Thank you to all two of you that have been watching along with us today. <laughs> Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you get notified of when we release our latest episodes. And make sure to check us both out in our social media profiles. You'll find them in the um, links below. And oh, we also have a Patreon that we'd like to announce, wouldn't we, Alaska? Or have we already announced it? No, we did already announce it. Never mind. So if you'd be interested in supporting us with the running costs for this channel and our podcast, please, please do check out the link in the description and uh, come support us there. And you'll get some nice extra bits and pieces there too. Did we do the thing? I think we did the thing. We did the thing? We did the thing. We did the thing. We did the thing. We did the thing, 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 with rainbows! <laughs> well, one of us did the thing with rainbows, one just looks like they've been drowned. I have enough rainbows to make up for both of us. <laughs> <laughs>